please stand as you're able. So we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. As a called ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 408, Come Thou Almighty King.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity. And bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is Genesis 1 and 2, or A. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome, from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of all kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit <coughs> with the seed in it, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, and it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser night to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light above the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swam and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was. God bless them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind, 
and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make human, humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of, the, of, in the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit and you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth that were created. The word of the Lord. Praise now, if you'll turn to Psalm 8, we're going to read responsibly. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic in your name in all the earth. You whose glory is above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against their enemies. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, you have set in their courses. What are your morals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine, with glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for our gospel explanation on page 205.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Don't worry, Tim just went to turn me down, I believe. <laughs> Today, we celebrate one of the most interesting doctrines or, or teachings of the church. And I've heard pastors try to describe it using a number of analogies, from ice, water, and steam, to three-leaf clovers, to three-in-one oil. But influenced, no doubt, by too many hours of TV with my Uncle Bud, the analogy that's always re resonated for me, at least for the longest time, was thinking of the Holy Trinity in terms of a tag team wrestling match between good <laughs> and evil. In the beginning, God the Father enters the ring, creating all that exists, bringing order and purpose out of chaos. God desires a relationship with humanity and eventually enters into a covenant with a particular people through whom God would call out to all people, offering abundant life in God. But humanity, including God's own people, choose not to follow God. And in turn, they turn from God's order, God's purpose, and they face the consequences, the, the, the chaos of their disobedience. To reconcile humanity with himself, the Father reaches over and tags the Son. And when Jesus jumps into the ring, demonstrating power over nature and disease and sin and even death, the crowds go wild with anticipation. But as the gospel story unfolds, the inclusive nature of Jesus' love is just too scandalous for many. And Jesus reveals that he's come to serve rather than be served, and that his power will be revealed in weakness. And his glory, his victory, will be revealed in suffering and death. At the cross, evil and chaos appear to pin Jesus. But in a remarkable move that leads many to cry out that like any other wrestling match, this too is fake, Jesus escapes the power of sin and death. But it isn't fake. Jesus really dies. And on the third day, he's raised from the dead and seen by hundreds before returning to his Father. With his work complete and final victory certain, Jesus reaches over and tags the Spirit for the final round, a round recorded in the Acts of the Apostles and the remainder of the New Testament, uh, and, and continues today as we wait for Jesus to return to the ring one last time. Now, it's probably going to come as no surprise to you that one afternoon, my first year in seminary, in the middle of a lecture on the Holy Trinity, I realized my understanding of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit was, let's say, flawed. <laughs> Not necessarily because of the wrestling analogy, but rather because like many before and after me, I was trying to explain and in turn limiting God's activity in the world to our experience with a Father who creates, a Son who redeems, and a Spirit who sets us apart and makes us holy. When in reality, the Holy Trinity is not so much a doctrine to be explained, but a relationship of oneness to cherish, a oneness of love and purpose that exists between the Father and the Son 
of the Holy Spirit. A relationship that God shares with humanity. One that's to be lived out in a particular way. A particular way that's possible because God says that it will always be with us. And that's what we hear in each of today's readings. In, in that first lesson that, that, that Helen read so beautifully. You may not realize it, but this creation story was written while the people of Israel were exiled in Babylon. While there are those who will interpret the story as a literal reporting of God's creative activity for a people who have been defeated in battle and wonder if the gods of their enemies are mightier than their God. It's a song of hope and praise and in part maybe even defiance. A song in which they reflected upon God's presence, God's power, and the care and goodness of all that God had made. A song in which the people of Israel proclaimed that it's their God and not the gods of Babylon who brought order out of chaos and spoke into being the heavens and the earth and all that exists. It's the God of Israel who created the man and woman in his image created them to be in relationship with God, created them to share in God's work as royal stewards of God's creation. It's the God of Israel who, is, who in his care for all that he created established that day of rest. And it's the same God who in Abraham chose them and blessed them to be a blessing. And although they strayed from God, their hope comes in the promise that God has not abandoned them, but is present and will continue to create and to bring order out of chaos and hope where they see only hopelessness and new life where they see death. And while as we heard the word wind in the creation story can also mean spirit, and God says, let us make humankind in our image. From the perspective of the people of Israel, all they knew and all that mattered was that the God of all creation was with them. Now, of course, all of that changed after Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And as disciples and the early church and the writers of the New Testament came face to face with the reality that the same God who created all things and, and the same power and love and care for all that God created was somehow present and active in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit. That they shared with God the Father a unity of will and purpose, a completeness of mutual love, and a mutual self-giving for the created. That we saw at work in, in the Father's sending of the Holy Spirit to overshadow Mary. And in Jesus' baptism, where the Holy Spirit descends upon him, empowering his ministry, and then the Father affirms, This is my Son, the Beloved, in whom I am well pleased. And we see it in Jesus' ministry, where he's obedient to the Father's will to the point of suffering and dying on a cross, and on the third day, rising from the dead. It's an inseparable unity that in today's gospel, the resurrected Jesus affirms to his worshiping and at the same time doubting disciples, not by trying to explain the relationship that exists among them, but that announcing within that relationship, he has been given all authority over all that exists in the heavens and the earth. And that Jesus uses that authority to entrust to his followers, to his disciples, the continuation of his work, which, by the way, is also the work and the will of the Father, and is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Within this relationship, Jesus commands his disciples to go and make other disciples of all nations, regardless of their gender or skin color or age or economic status or religious background, sharing the good news of his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, and forgiveness of sins for all people, and to baptize these new disciples, to welcome them into a community that's created and sustained by God's gifts of grace and love and fellowship. 
and then to teach them how to live a new life, how, how to be obedient followers of Jesus, how, how to live in the grace of God, how, how to be royal stewards of all that God created and live in a way that brings order out of chaos and embodies hope in the midst of hopelessness and life in the midst of death. Not so they'll be loved by God, but to share a love and a life that's already theirs in Jesus' faithfulness. And then lastly, Jesus reminds his doubting and worshiping disciples that all of this is only possible through the mercy and the strength of God. And that he will be with them always. And therefore, with us. While there's much with which we wrestle when it comes to God and God's plans for our life and understanding scripture. And just as a side note, some doubted in the scriptures. Some's not there. The, the writers inserted it because they thought it didn't make sense. But we know better. Doubting and worshiping sisters and brothers in Christ, what we do know, what we don't wrestle with, is that is in our life as followers of Jesus, baptized in the grace and love and fellowship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the authority and the power of this body of Christ to be about the work of God and making disciples does not come in our ability to understand or define or analyze or even control the mystery of God's self-giving love for us. But rather, it comes in the promise and the reality that the same God who spoke all things into being, and it was good, the God who in Jesus took on flesh and came among us to suffer and die and to rise, the God who through the Holy Spirit breathed his presence and power on Jesus' disciples on that first Pentecost, it is in and among us today. In our worship and prayer and song and, and the word proclaimed and studied in Christ's body and blood and bread and wine, loving us and convicting us and comforting us and forgiving us and creating <laughs> new hearts in us, obedient hearts in us, strengthening our faith and sending us out not to explain or to defend, but to live in and share the mystery and the certainty of God's love for all people. Serving as we hear each week with the poor and the suffering and the hungry, offering order in the midst of their chaos, hope where they see none, new life where all they see is death, and doing so in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a life and a mystery that's possible because God is with us, period. And that's very, very good news. News, in fact, as we say each week, for which we say, thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able, and we will sing our hymn of the day, number 412. Come, join the dance of Trinity.
our baptism into Christ. Living get together in trust and hope, we now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 104 in your hymnals. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every, every creeping thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick, especially Beverly and Glenn, Ruby and Cliff, Ann, Wayne, Ruth and Floyd, Judy, Danny, Gail and Hoover, Dot, Jean and Jim, Sammy, Stephen, Brenda, Leonard, and all of those whom we now lay before you with our lips and the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis, and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by child care responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of the school. God, in your mercy, Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection, life, in the age to come. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray. 
trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace using American Sign Language.
For your goodness, you've blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we've gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <clears throat>
Again, if you please stand as you're able. And let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sending him this morning is number 413. Holy, holy, holy.